Hello, dear all, dear visitors, dear attendees of this final discussion of uh, the last two days of hard work of New Media Museum's colloquium. Uh, just a short word for in the name of uh, PAF Festival. My name is Daniel Richter. I'm here to just quickly remind you that uh, two days of wonderful uh, festival that kind of shares the topic of your discussion uh, is happening. So let me just invite you to a few program blocks uh, that uh, are upcoming. We have a gaming program that's also very volatile medium, so, so you could attend that in the uh, next few hours if you are uh, here. And maybe performances and concert by Soho Renza, it's all Object Blue, but that's around midnight, so if you are late birds as I am, uh, you're dearly invited. Uh, I should also uh, thank to all of you, and namely Dushan Barak for moderating this event, which I haven't even attended, but I'm very delighted <laughs> that you're here and we can share this experience with you, this space with you. I have no idea of how, how much you've worked, what you, what you, what you, what are you uh, gonna tell about this all to all of us but I'm here to uh, share this experience with you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much to all of you. Uh, thank you as well. We also have no idea how much you worked, but uh, I guess uh, we'll uh, soon find out. We are somewhere at the beginning, right? Are we the... Yeah, th this is actually the first block, so enjoy. Okay, so that's a nice, uh, something ends and something new begins. So we will see which part this is. Um, I am happy that we are, uh, uh, we, we are uh, kindly hosted by Flora and Puff. And uh, it's my really big pleasure to uh, uh, spend uh, another hour or more uh, with you. We will share and uh, discuss uh, some of the ideas that uh, emerged uh, in the past day and a half. So we were, <clears throat> we were hosted by a Museum of Art in Olomouc, uh, where we discussed the uh, uh, questions and challenges uh, related to opening uh, uh, art museums to new generations of artists in terms of uh, 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 collecting their uh, work, taking care of their work, presenting their work, and, uh, uh, and so on. So we discussed uh, uh, videos, we, dis we discussed installations, kind of complex works, uh, and sound, sound pieces, and uh, digital art, and so on. Um, the past, uh, we have, uh, well, the, the meeting was, uh, is kind, is quite uh, uh, interdisciplinary. We have uh, people from museums, we also have people from archives and from uh, non-profits, art centers, mostly from uh, what is here called Central Europe. Um, besides the local Czech uh, institutions, there are people from uh, Poland, Hungary, Germany, and uh, Norway, and so on. Switzerland, can I say? <laughs> um, I will do a very quick intro, so uh, you connect names with faces. So uh, let me start uh, on my left, towards uh, at the end. Uh, this is Eva Skopalova, who is a, a creator of, uh, a con also modern and contemporary art in a National Gallery uh, here in Czechia, in Prague. Uh, Jakub Frank, who is a curator of uh, modern and contemporary art in Art Museum Olomouc. Uh, this is uh, Aga Vielocha, uh, who is now about to start a, a postdoc fellowship in, uh, at the uh, Art Academy in Bern, 
And uh, previously she worked for several years as a, as a conservat art conservator at the M Plus Museum in Hong Kong. We have uh, Matej Sternat, uh, who is a uh, head of curators at the uh, Narodny Filmový Archiv uh, in Prague. We have Silva Polakova, who is a uh, coordinator, curator of uh, uh, in in the in the archive, and uh, both are involved in the project uh, of a video archive, uh, in which they have hundreds of uh, mostly uh, Czech-born video art. Uh, we have a very familiar face, uh, but I will still introduce you, Martin Mazanets, uh, uh, one of the long-term team members of PAF. Very, very he here with PAF since 2000. Uh, no, since 2005. Okay, so yeah, almost 20 years. So my archives is just for. Yeah, we will get to talk about your archive as well. <laughs> So we have uh, Anna Lena Seiser, uh, who is uh, a managing director of uh, Neue Berliner Kunstverein, as well as uh, head of uh, NBK Video Forum in Berlin. Uh, we have Ella Wisotska, who is uh, working at the Department of uh, Film Digitization and Film Studies. Yeah. Uh, I will repeat this since there was no mic, uh, of uh, uh, film studies, digitization, and uh, preservation. preservation at uh, the National Film Archive in Poland, Desh Audiovisual Institute. Um, uh, we have Anna Tudos, uh, who works with the uh, CQ Foundation uh, based in Budapest, uh, a non-profit that has been around for more than 30 years now, if I'm not mistaken and really pioneering uh, uh, net-based uh, net, net arts in uh, Hungary and beyond. And uh, finally, we have uh, Gina Cheng, uh, who is a media conservator at the National Museum of uh, Art, Design, and Architecture in Oslo. So, oh, last but not least. <laughs> We have uh, uh, Jitka Hlavačkova, who is a curator or the curator of modern and contemporary art at the City Gallery in Prague. So, wow, that took me a while. So, <laughs> uh, so this is us, and uh, let me maybe open with uh, so with just a few words about the project. Uh, so. This event, uh, the colloquium that we uh, did in the past day, uh, day and a half, is a little bit of a culmination of a pilot phase of a, of a research project in which we were uh, uh, working with uh, only bunch, maybe five, and then growing number of institutions in Central Europe, most museums and nonprofits, in uh, in um, kind of improving their um, their their workflows, their, their approaches, their, uh, their work in terms of uh, really taking care of, of this new generation of artworks. I um, uh, um, Now I lost my thought. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, to cut long story short, um, w the, the, I would say the, 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 the general, well, the, the aim of the project is to really create a platform where, in which these different institutions or organizations can really exchange and share their, their experience and their challenges uh, in this kind of area. And uh, of course, uh, we, uh, we, like, we would like to see it as a long-term project. So. The, this pilot phase uh, is about to finish in, uh, in uh, summer, this summer. And uh, in case you missed the, the talks at the colloquium, uh, like those five kind of founding partners presented what they did within this uh, time frame. So you can find it on YouTube or on the website of, uh, of uh, Art Museum Olomouc and Seat. Um, but uh, the, the, I would say that the, the general topic was how these different institutions can really work together. Since um, we are all 
publicly funded, I would say. Uh, there are no, there is no private sector uh, here. So we have a kind of a common field, a common playground, and common responsibilities uh, towards this generation. So, or the, these or next generations. So I would uh, really maybe open with this, uh, um, yeah, I mean, with, with uh, quite uh, like the, the hardest question, how can we uh, work together? How can uh, museums work together with archives? How archives can work together with uh, 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 non-profits and non-profits with museums? So when it comes to these kind of art forms that are sometimes called time-based uh, media art, um, uh, they have very different requirements than, let's say, painting and sculpture. And uh, in, in the past uh, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, there emerged a profession uh, which of, of specialization, uh, basically an expertise, uh, which uh, can help in taking care of these works. And uh, the people doing this work are like this profession or this kind of role is called media conservation or media conservators. But still there are only a handful of um, uh, museums in the world that, that have these people as their employees. So, um, so that's, that's one of the, one of the issues. Do art museums in, in Czechia and, and in the region in a position that they can develop uh, these expertise and positions for, for these kind of people? Should they uh, be uh, kind of creating positions for them and, and, and working, uh, working on uh, time-based media care in the house? Or is it more sustainable in the long, long run to, to work with maybe some external bodies, more like smaller and more specialized institutions that would be, have like a proper laboratory where they can work with video, they, where, can, where they can work with the software and uh, other kind of problematic elements or fragile or unstable elements of artworks. Um, yeah, can we start uh, uh, <laughs> with the latest uh, arrival? <laughs> Thank you. So I'm from the Prague City Gallery, uh, which is rather a small institution. Uh, and we, uh, but we have a collection of new media and uh, it's increasing quite, quite quickly, the number of, of, uh, of uh, art works based on technologies and based on and rather hybrid hybrid um, forms of uh, installations of, of many many different kinds of technological and also physical phys physical or, or uh, mat material works uh, to like together in one uh, Um, quite a basic uh, f f style, uh, very usual. So maybe, like, maybe to reframe it. So, uh, if if you would be able to get whatever you yeah. imagine, like this kind of uh, willful thinking, uh, would be wishing yeah. for a media conservator in your in your gallery. Yes, uh, we. we <clears throat> uh, I am sure we have no, no we have not uh, capacity personal capacity for for this for this so so we we would probably appreciate the, the cooperation with any with some 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 special special uh, center or something yeah uh, you, you you suggested <laughs> okay so I'm coming from rather big gallery from national gallery but uh, we've got very, very small collection of new media and rather smaller collection of moving images. And uh, well, um, while the field of new media is uh, accelerating so quickly, so we cannot keep up with uh, 
with the technology as such. So it would be uh, wasting our energy to have a conservator in a house. It's uh, rather um, more strategic to to connect with other institutions and uh, create some hub or something uh, where we can work together because it's uh, well. Actually, it's ordinary practice in a conservation. We're working also with Academy of Arts, uh, Fine Arts, um, and we have networks for conservation. So uh, I don't think that we really need to have one person in a house. We cannot support the technology. We cannot support the knowledge of one person, it's better to connect and rhizomatically develop a uh, structure we can sustain. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, if I may continue uh, to sum up the state institutions or public institutions in, in Czech Republic, uh, I would just repeat what the colleagues said. I mean, we don't have personal capacity. Uh, we have only very limited uh, number of, of works, uh, new media artworks in the collection. So um, thinking of having a person uh, in-house devoted to conservation and preservation of the of the artworks uh, isn't possible. Uh, however, I think that uh, at least uh, talking about the very very few pieces that are in our collection uh, that are of a new media uh, or or time based or, or whatever. Uh, medium, uh, we are actually able to take care of them. We are able to somehow uh, reconstruct them. We are able to more maybe appropriate word is to repair them. Uh, however, this is not, a, let's say, a, you know, a solution that will be uh, uh, sort of yeah, like overall uh, solution. This is just you know, uh, if if something breaks in a in a art piece, uh, we can somehow reconstruct it, somehow repair it. We can uh, go to a person uh, who is uh, who can repair it, but actually not for uh, you know not in in the long run, uh, not not to somehow conceptually think about this conservation of the artworks. So uh, that's also why uh, there was so urgent need for start this project, like to get to know how to deal with it and how to uh, deal with these artworks in a more uh, complex sense. So yeah, and that's maybe like the, the role of, of our other partners in this discussion. Okay, so uh, I think you have mentioned also this idea of that there will be some kind of a hub or external laboratory or this kind of a, uh, kind of a, a preservation paradise where all these uh, problems would be solved and uh, museum would, would be able to focus on other things, making exhibitions, publishing catalogs, and uh, doing nice programs. Um, so, Aga, you worked, uh, you were not working as a media conservator, but uh, in, you had more general uh, specialization uh, at, uh, at, uh, in Hong Kong. So, but uh, you have, uh, you are familiar, you are quite familiar with the uh, uh, museum scene world in, uh, in Europe. Uh, what do you think about this uh, kind of model of, uh, of, of of an external hub serving museums in terms of art or time-based media preservation? I mean, uh, I, I was thinking about it during this uh, conf conference and um, um, while I was just talking with people uh, personally and um, I think, I mean, it's kind of a um, great idea to have something like that, but I, there is, um, it's very difficult to establish I, I guess such a hub, like um, freestanding hub, which is not attached to any other institution, so um, which is an institution by itself. So um, I think that um, a possible model for having uh, a kind of a centralized hub is to attach it to one leading institution within the region somehow. Um, that was my experience from uh, from Asia. Is that actually the museum that I was working for? 
uh, was meant to actually build an infrastructure for the region and being this leading institution for the region um, and providing not only services but also um, a training and education for, um, for other professionals and for other institutions around. So that's, um, I, I, yeah, I, I kind of, it's difficult for me to kind of like, within this very diverse region, to kind of like think about something that can be a freestanding hub, especially that everything which is related to preservation uh, and also as establishing practices, it has to be thought as long term. And as we all know, and we discussed that during our um, panels, is that uh, we are having problems with uh, financing our projects and everything is project based. So we can build a hub and then uh, the, the project will finish and then there, there has to be something that um, the secure the continuation that preserve the love to preserve the works. So um, that's, that's kind of my, um, one, one of my thoughts and the second one is that, um, I mean, uh, to build this hub, because what is what is happening within this um, encounter is amazing. That this is a, a network building, and basically we are getting to know each other. And this is a great work that this project has done. But again, <laughs> it is um, a very difficult task to maintain this network because I have seen many different networks around the world um, emerging around conservation of contemporary art um, or art, new art forms. But I also have seen a lot of those networks dying. And um, so I think that there are two strengths somehow to think about kind of continuation of this project is to invest in this kind of like maintenance of this network. Uh, and the second one is to think about um, yeah, building some kind of uh, technical or logistical and knowledge base, knowledge infrastructure uh, to actually uh, um, um, do the preservation itself. Um, yeah, thanks so much. So that was very rich. Um, not that the previous uh, comments were not rich, but uh, let me jump to Gina, uh, if, I, if I may. Uh, so, Gina, you are, um, uh, you actually are a media conservator um, and you work in, in, uh, in Oslo, in Norway, and as, as uh, I think you, you were telling me that uh, you, are, you are probably the only person in Scandinavia with this job. So, um, what do you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would, what, how would you respond to what was uh, said, and how do you maybe view, like, is it possible to compare the situation here in Central Europe with with the one in Scandinavia? If it's not too broad, question. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, the profession as a time-based media, you know, field itself is young. And then, because my personal background is not uh, like media conservation, uh, cons conservator, yeah, per se. So, in a way, that kind of a lot of self education involved. That also plays into that explain that even though National Museum of Norway has a long history of collecting and then uh, taking care of the media art, but it's not necessarily easy for me to just hire, I get hired and then start the program right away. So I think in that respect, it's very comparable to your situation that try to build the kind of program. Uh, not only um, you know providing conservation service, but the building um, kind of awareness around this time-based media conservation. Uh, one thing I wanted to kind of comment on, kind of in relation to what Aga was saying previously, was that uh, there is a reason why kind of uh, publicly funded institutions are here like museums because uh, yeah but also at the same time it's important to have in a society different level of a kind of organization have to taken care of the media and a different level of or different kind of activities so one of the reason important institution is that you know in a way it's a public funded so they have a responsibility and reason for maintaining cultural response uh, sustainability which means this form of film and video or any kind of electronic software based digital arts can continue uh, globally and then kind of local specific kind of uh, way so that's it's very important the reason why institution has to invest 
you know, having a conservation program. But saying that institution is all, always based on selective because it's not very easy to get the kind of every um, yeah emerging artist to get. It's very high high. So by saying that here, I think and uh, the one I'm trying to kind of think differently in Norway is that not uh, only we think about kind of collection and institutionalized collection and preservation is the only way to approach this. It's not, it, it's not the only way. So in a way, um, other, wh why not think about reaching artists directly, give the tool to kind of self-document and uh, uh, have ability to self-document uh, and preserve uh, in a way because um, e even though we have a museum, so like the kind of work, we have diversity work, but the not all, uh, one uh, like me have all the expertise for cover audio, visual, or software, digital, right? So it's in a way, but one of the benefit of digital is that the container, the basic ones and zeros are the same. So in a way that, you know, that kind of make easier to approach when you think about it. Uh, but also the kind of, as a kind of analog audio visual is a kind of different matter. But I think it can go as institution can um, kind of liaison with a small different level of organization or artist, kind of think about kind of not only that kind of institutionalized collection as preserved as a model, but more kind of creative way or like a festival is another, another thing. And then, so I rather approach, think outside of this kind of museum, but museum has to, in a certain way, I think it's also important to have that kind of conservation because it's publicly trusted. There is no way that we avoid that kind of uh, responsibility. But I think, you know, that is kind of next way that, you know, we all artists have somehow, they can self-sustain their own work. So when you when you say that okay, give tools to the artists, uh, uh, then like, I don't know why, but the first uh, image I had is Petr Valek, who was uh, our guest uh, yesterday morning, mm -hmm. and uh, there was this uh, sound piece uh, that he did, and then uh, uh, so this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I would not be able to describe it now, but uh, yeah, this is really something you have to see. But maybe you are familiar with the work of uh, Petr Valek or Valek Vanik? Valek, yes. Um, but anyway, so but what he said was uh, so Jakub had a stage interview with him, and then on any question in that w related to the okay, can we change this? Uh, what to do when it breaks down or? Uh, shall we really uh, try to keep it as long as we can? Uh, like he mostly said, well, uh, it's up to you, I don't really care. And, uh, okay, uh, but anyway, so, so uh, you know, like uh, all this, every artist has like, a, of course, a very different attitude, but uh, I think these attitudes towards, okay, self-documenting and really taking care of uh, our work is, is, um, uh, may be uh, interesting for, uh, for a small uh, group of, uh, of uh, creators. But uh, maybe that would be really interesting to hear from uh, you, Silva. So you, you have interviewed over the past few years quite a number of uh, artists working, especially in Czechia, with video. And uh, so can you maybe tell us a few stories about their attitudes towards presentation, even maybe funny stories? I'm not sure if I can uh, tell you about funny stories <laughs> only, but um, um, I like to heard about uh, part of solution that uh, self-documenting uh, would be useful because uh, we are speaking about um, huge uh, media variation and um, also part solution is a solution. So. Um, Another, um, another um, way how to uh, prevent uh, this fragile art uh, is to have uh, your own uh, department um, for this. 
but uh, you said that it's not necessary uh, to have, or it's not possible uh, to have another person especially for this task. Um, but uh, I think we have to speak um, more about the lack of methodology, uh, how to um, um, describe and uh, archive uh, this uh, kind of art. Uh, and I think that uh, if we would be able to uh, develop uh, a good methodology for this, and we are trying to do it in our project, uh, we could educate um, existing um, um, researchers uh, in your departments um, to follow this methodology and it would be also useful and it's um, economical. <laughs> so no stories? No stories, I'm sorry. Maybe <laughs> it will come. <laughs> uh, uh. Okay, I, I wanted to go back to, but we'll, we'll get back to, because this is, this is something we actually didn't discuss in this colloquium, uh, the, the, actually the role of the artist in this, where we were mostly discussing really pro from the perspective of uh, institutions, like okay, what's the job of museums, what is, what's the job of the archive, and so on. So yeah, let's uh, get back to uh, this sooner or later. Just one remark. Uh, yesterday, I think it was Margaret uh, Strickot said uh, the who, from from ZKM said that actually there's no methodology, which which I found like really interesting from from the point of view of uh, institution with such a vast experience in uh, in the field, and I think this is actually a, a problem that that having a, a conservator of new media. Uh, means that you have uh, to have some someone who really understands, like you know, all the all the technology behind all the artworks, all the types of artworks in your in your uh, collections, uh, from video video materials as like physical uh, to I don't know all Arduinos and and like you know electronic uh, appliances and so on and so on. So I think this is also like a huge challenge and, and issue that, that uh, makes it much more difficult. Just one, one sentence. I, I feel like it's, uh, uh, there is someone from the, the educational sphere missing here because, the, because we are, or I'm not sure, but uh, for example, someone from AVU, our Academy of, of Fine Art or something, because, because, they, because we need a huge scale of, of these uh, particular spe spe these specialists on many, many different um, situations. Well, if I can react, uh, for us it was crucial to develop our um, condition reports uh, because uh, for us, just visually, it's some kind of moving image and we have to know uh, properties uh, to being able at least preserve it and uh, know the conditions. So uh, right now we are uh, detailing uh, describing um, the original and also the copy and we are reporting aspect ratios, audios and all the channels and everything so we can keep track any changes, any new versions and updates. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Gina, please go ahead. You wanted to. No, I just wanted to order. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um. Uh, so I just I just wanted to kind of counter argument this um, idea of no methodology because I think that okay I mean every um, case needs a um, kind of very unique approach, but at some point I mean there is. Um, the, the, the kind of the field of time-based media conservation is um, is operating since 20 years, so they have already put some kind of a framework <laughs> for 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 doing things. And I, I don't I'm not saying that because I, I'm I'm also a person who is very skeptical around you know like 
uh, systematizing approaches, especially within the fields of art, but I think that there are some reference points and some tools functioning that are um, adaptable and they have to be flexible within this kind of no methodology approach. But I think that there are ways of, um, so we all, for example, like the field has already decided, okay, so actually documentation is a way of preservation. And there are some kind of frameworks of, of doing this documentation and some methodologies within this framework, such as, for example, artist interview, that is one of the method of, uh, of preserving. So, um, so yeah, I think that the no methodology is a bold statement. <laughs> uh, and at the same time, I wanted to also comment on the, um, you know, like asking artists to preserve their works themselves. Um, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's one of the approaches and there's a lot of artists who are self-documenting, especially in this era of, you know, kind of self-promotion. So you have to document your work to be able to kind of show it somewhere because you have to show what you have done. <laughs> so I think that to a certain extent artists are doing that, but not all the work is easy to, like, I mean, you can document it, but there are some other approaches within the preservation that artists are not always able to do. And, um, and I think it's a lot to ask artists to do the job beyond their own job, which is actually artistic creation. So um, it is good to provide tools if they are interested in doing that. But as kind of like national institutions, I think that it is um, a national institution's responsibility also to care for this heritage. OK, so we have uh, quite a few themes already, which is not good, which is not bad. Uh, I'm just saying it. But uh, <laughs> uh, we maybe do a round with, uh, 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 can I call you archival perspective? <laughs> or start there? Um, so um, let me maybe frame it in a way that um, uh, we have film, video, net-based art. So it's quite diverse in terms of uh, media. Um, in, so in terms of uh, doing what you do, uh, like taking care of video art, moving image, uh, net-based art, and so on, um, do you need museums? Um, any of you in your work? Um, anybody feel like responding to this? Like, do you see a role of museums in your kind of missions? Or you are completely uh, happy in the situation that you just kind of network among the, yourselves and and if museum comes and OK, we need to borrow this or that, single multi-channel piece, okay, uh, we can do that, here it is. But let's say in terms of methodology and uh, kind of approaches and I don't know, uh, like working with the same artists, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I mean, we are, NBK is also an exhibition institution, so we're not in a museum, but we're having collections, but I think we have a, our aim is also to bring arts very close to the public and to have a very, um, is it just because I'm in front of the speakers, probably it sounds a bit strange to me, myself. Here it sounds okay. But it's okay to you, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, it's a, it's a tricky question. I don't know if I really understand the, <laughs> it as a question, but uh, I think we discussed it before. I mean, I can just speak for, uh, in Berlin, we also have the museums, the, the municipal, the local museums, but also Berlin is a city-state, so we have state-based museums, we, and we have local museums. They have the same troubles with like um, moving image uh, and um, media or time-based art forms uh, as we do. And it's a, a bit what was already said before, we all have trouble, like financial, financial troubles and also personal troubles to um, take care and it would be of course uh, nice to cooperate in that but um, then again the question where would that be housed and how to also make it a place that is um, that treats everyone equal um, so yeah 
um, I have nothing against museums, <laughs> of course, but I think it's also good to have different kind of structures to make, to have collections and make them available in a very, like, in a very simple way and um, with less barriers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just kind of pointing out that so maybe there's something that why museums need you, but there it seems that like there's not so much why archives would need museums. Because, so we, we had this uh, talk about the hub. Uh, so you seem like, for example, in Narodny Film Archive, you have the laboratory, you have the, the methodologies and so on. So would you be able to be the hub? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mentioned that we need to sort of, you know, hold each other hands and start knocking on the doors of the Ministry of Culture, trying to explain that, yes, we sort of share the common ground in the respect that the hub is needed. Uh, we have no great ambition in sort of putting it all on our backs. But at the same time, we know that we have already done some work in this respect, but now it's more about really structural thinking and good cultural politics and planning uh, so that we don't only have to sort of live from one project to, to another. So that's as far as the hub is concerned, we are all for that idea and would be happy to partake in, in that. Uh, and as far as museums are concerned, I mean, it's important for us and from our perspective that we talk about the different economics of the work. So of, oftentimes, we talk about completely different work status. Uh, many of you are familiar with the writings of Erika Balsam, for example, who uh, really clearly points out uh, what the differences are uh, between how a work is perceived and sort of circulated uh, within film context and within the arts context. So we respect that difference and we like to work together and we of course also respect the differences in the space, uh, the spatial temporal structure of uh, a museum and of a film archive or, or cinema, so we don't try to replicate the museum experience in a cinema, and we are always happy when uh, a museum doesn't try to replicate the cinema experience in the museum, like, you know, building the, the sort of play, playing a cinema within a white cube and so on. So what about PAF perspective? Uh, our perspective? Uh, we, are, we are quite small and like what I mentioned yesterday, we can just offer our archive. But um, it's, uh, I think it's, it's a question of priorities of state institutions and their collections. Because I don't think it's about like a number of people who can like work on these projects, but it's about cultural heritage and it's, it's about our responsibility, how we will take care about and when we start to collect moving images or I don't know, sound art, then the next step is like uh, the question how we will preserve it, how we will uh, reconstruct something. But if you, if you don't start this, you don't have to ask these questions. So I think it's quite, like, uh, quite easy for classical institutions to be just like a familiar and okay like with classical media like a painting, sculptures, they are afraid of objects and they are afraid of uh, moving images and uh, new media. Because I know the, the, they, know, they don't have a structure for this, but the structure is still the same, it's about the priority. And then when you will have a collection of a few videos or a few films, then you can start to do the next steps. And we know it from the, from the Czech scene that there is a now, now there is a quite like a, like a revolution that one of one of the state institutions, like a, uh, like a city gallery in uh, one city in the northern part of the Czech Republic. They started their own collection of moving images. And uh, yeah, it's like, a, and, and they really like a trying to change uh, a market with, uh, with uh, moving images uh, here because uh, they are, uh, they try to sell that it's like a unique object, so we have to, they are asking artists to, to sell like a, just like a unique copy of each video and they're trying to, yeah, yeah it's, it's, but it's great, like we know about it and they, they really like what is good about this, we can, 
uh, for example, I disagree with this strategy, but they really like opened the discussion about. It. And now I think it's really like a, like a, your role, like a, uh, how you will react to this, because then there can be just like one institution in the Czech Republic, and they will have I don't know like. Um, 70% of our heritage of a uh, moving image uh, that came from uh, from the history of uh, experimental film and video art in in uh, Czech Republic because yeah so it's uh, but it's not going to happen we still have our hard disk for fav yes yeah, so, so it's like really like i can afford but like it's it's really like i i understand your position but it's not about and i know i know that you are not um, on a position of um, like a director of a uh, gallery or the the main the boss but uh, it's really about the priority and how how you like a uh, divide divide the budget because you kn I know like uh, every year you are like uh, buying some new stuff and it's always like a uh, not it's it's up to you how we work with the budget but like uh, not for example every year but when I when I'm um, visiting your website it's always about like uh, the next paintings next sculptures and yeah yeah it's a uh, like you have uh, you mentioned it yesterday uh, but it's it's we are opening the discussion we have to speak about it in a positive way but the national gallery you have like a 70 moving images it's like one yeah, person but we just acquired a few new ones yeah and it's great uh, yeah conservation it's one part and acquiring new artworks is the other. And yeah. Uh, we are uh, we are not focused on media specific uh, collection. We collecting contemporary art. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. also means new media, so mm -hmm. it comes into collection naturally. So growing new media collection, it will happen inevitably. It will just happen in a couple of years, uh, because right now we starting to focus on it. But we have to also develop the part of conservation, which is struggling, of course, but everybody struggles with that. And uh, it has nothing to do with acquiring new art. Um, we yeah. are not overlooking the field, definitely not. Uh, we are well aware of what's happening. And actually, uh, I have to say for my institution and for yours also, also uh, we both acquired... Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's not about. I, I didn't say that it's against something uh, against National Gallery or like yeah. a City Gallery of Sorry. Prague, but I said that it's about like a priority you have. Yeah, but, of but course, you can you can acquire. Like misunderstanding because because the the problem is much deeper because we have, for example, our institution has no conservator even for paperwork. For example, for example, it's it's like <laughs> you know it's it's something we are on a different level. We have. We have uh, uh, there is a lack of conservator or, or, or the, the the employees the for so many <laughs> fields so many thi things it's not just just about the the, the moving image or, or technology this this new te technologies. Yeah, but Sorry, like it's it's just okay, like okay. you so have I like a like history uh, of 100 that's why, years. That's why we need to share, and it, it doesn't mean uh, that we 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 are, we wouldn't acquire a paperworks just because there are there are, there, in, there is no uh, restorator or conservator for it just in the institution because because there is plenty of them outside, so we can we can um, cooperate with. What we need uh, with, with anyone yeah, else. Yeah. Maybe one remark uh, from last year's acquis uh, acquisition. It was half of it of new media. So uh, of course we have to focus also uh, to paintings uh, for sculptures, but majority of it was new media collection. So, and sometimes it's labeled like a sculpture or a painting. Uh, it's just because of the labels and uh, if we would be really meticulous we would be able to um, count the new media collection even more it's like uh, right now 500 less than 500 inventory numbers but it could be more because there are a lot of 
things from second half of 20th century, which could be labeled easily as a new media, but we just call it uh, internally for us painting or sculpture, but uh, it's plastic, so what can we do with it? So it, it, it is a little bit, um, hmm, the perspective is not uh, that easy as you see it from uh, outside. Yeah, I can also imagine, uh, you know, like the selecting uh, work for acquisition is uh, quite a labyrinth of decisions uh, with many people involved. And, uh, and uh, also uh, US curators are not there forever, so there are people really changing in the institution. And I, yeah, we probably can uh, understand that that uh, to really make a change inside the museum, whatever it is, for whatever beliefs, takes uh, a really long um, uh, time. And I really have this Matej uh, wanting to comment, so let's hear what he has to say. No, I just wanted to point out the, the fact that, uh, from my general understanding, uh, the, there is quite a substantial amount of funding directed towards traditional conservation and restoration. These are not like underfunded uh, disciplines. Uh, the traditional restorers and conservators of, uh, say, traditional media in the Czech Republic uh, are established, let's put it that way. Of course, I mean, there's never enough funding for anything, but generally speaking, there is yeah, yeah, and, and you mentioned you don't have anyone in-house, but you probably work with external people. We have the guild is quite established, etc. There's another way for us to be tackling the situation is to try to push uh, in this direction to have this field that we all agree actually exists being accepted more within these traditional realms of uh, restoration conservation in the Czech Republic in order for the institutions to be able to allocate more funding towards that. So that's the comment. I mean, if, if you look at like Baroque statutes or uh, traditional painting, uh, there is funding for, for these. And there's like laboratories, there's the, the University of Applied Chemistry, what, what's not, there's, there's circles and professionals. That's, that's okay. why I'm asking for the I don't know, an educational, some, some, some like real <laughs> uh, training. background, yeah, training. Yeah, yeah. the training uh, is really, well, it, when it comes to media conservation, I guess the nearest or closest uh, facility with, uh, with, uh, with the ability to train people in this profession is Vienna, uh, if I'm not mistaken, where they have a program in uh, new materials and media, contemporary art at the uh, one of the two academies, I forgot which one. Uh, could be Angavante, could be the other one. But, uh, <clears throat> but again, uh, that's, that's, uh, uh, that, that, that takes a long while, right? Uh, and uh, uh, it's probably not so easy to attract graduates from Austria to, you know, work in, uh, institutions this direction, but uh, maybe it is. Um, let me maybe go back to kind of sharing and collaboration uh, uh, theme. Um, so we were, there was methodology mentioned, uh, then it became a little bit controversial. Uh, then again, uh, okay, maybe there is, uh, maybe it makes sense to have some kind of ideas uh, that are uh, they have a form of some kind of guidelines, but uh, maybe Ella, do you want to comment on um, on uh, well, you work in the film archive? Yeah, I, I, um, first I would I would like to comment on your last sentence. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Uh, so I think it's not true that we need to go to Vienna to find a restorer who is dealing with uh, new media or plastics. Like if you if you are in touch with any. Um, conservation restoration department in depending on the countries organized different in, in Poland for example is in the, with Academia of Fine Arts maybe there will be no department which which is called restoration of 
time-based media art. Yeah, but there will be people who will be dealing with it, and we don't need each year 100 uh, time-based media restore where they will be working. Yeah, so it's really enough if once a year they will produce to people who are deeply interested in it. We don't need five net artwork restorers yeah, every year. So, so uh, I think if someone is um, networking sincere in this field, you can find people who can do it in, in your region, in your country. Uh, still, it's worth to make uh, to, to as the meeting today to network to see what's going on in, in the region as such and not network as much as possible. Uh, because the, the problems are quite similar, and not only in Central Europe, in, but in general. So the, I think also it would be sad if, if you would be investing so much time on you know, reinventing the real, making the standards again, great again, <laughs> making the methods great again, because those are already known and a little bit polished since 10 years, but they are existing, and there is a lot of published uh, works about this. So, so it's just every need, everybody need to make their homework. And yeah. Yes, uh, there are also um, like this uh, short term, uh, like uh, shorter term uh, training programs. I think MoMA has been doing in the past three or four years something called Media Conservation Workshop, in which they have uh, uh, like open positions, maybe like co-funded or funded positions for people to kind of follow the program over several weeks and uh, uh, like the, the responses uh, have been quite uh, very, like very positive um, but uh, do you want to add anything uh, to I just I just wanted to kind of um, say that also like I mean me and uh, Ella we are both trained conservators, but none of us is trained as a um, time-based media conservator, but we both were, are working in this field. Um, and uh, so there's not the only way that you have to actually found a department and train people from a new, and most of the people who are actually doing time-based media conser conservation are not trained as such, because those trainings that opened just you know, in the recent decade, let's say. So there are different ways of, of doing that. And I can also share this um, experience from Hong Kong, which where I was working, which in Asia, which is like totally different, but it is, there is no training in conservation whatsoever. So, um, and how, how the institution was approaching this idea of being a, a hub and, um, and kind of like a reference center is also to kind of like build, um, this kind of a way of knowledge sharing. So, okay, we are maybe bringing something, f someone from outside to run a workshop. We are sending something from, from someone from inside to, for example, to MoMA. And I, I for example, I pr participated in this MoMA course. It was great, it was for free. Um, so there's one course here, second course there. There's a lot of things going on around. There's a lot of materials. And uh, I think that the network can actually allow to build this uh, education as an additional kind of level to what is already there as a tradition of, uh, of, of preservation of heritage. Yeah, um, it's a great idea. So next pub, we will do this workshop. Yeah, you're welcome. It's not gonna be for free. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can prepare it now. It's going to take place in December, from December 1st to 4th. The workshop is going to be for two days. <laughs> okay, so this yeah. meeting was, was worth of at least this uh, proposal also. Um, um, let me, uh, so in, in Budapest in the past few years, uh, th there were these uh, media art preservation symposia uh, organized by Ludwig Museum Budapest. And I was there twice, and there will be always like lots of students in uh, like these upper rows sitting, I think 20, 30 people, and I always wondered, oh, okay, I mean, I understood, okay, maybe that's, you don't want to ask the wrong question, that there would be a silence. And, and uh, I wonder, so from your kind of uh, work in, a, well, from your work in a C3 foundation, in v which has a very strong collection of, um, of uh, digital art uh, from 90s uh, onward. Uh, have you, like, 
was there any occasion that that uh, kind of the, the the paths of C3 and the paths of uh, art conservation or art history students in Budapest would overlap or meet? Uh, first of all, I never went to MAPS because it was not free. You had to pay to get in, even as a student. So I don't know how those students ended up there, but it's good that they were there. Um, I wonder what what happened. Like, yeah, what whether you were like from whether C3 were in touch with any kind of students who would because this symposium they would they would always take uh, always take uh, I don't know three days or so. So they were quite rich with people from all over East West and so on. And yeah, I wonder how I it translated into kind of the maybe the yeah. scene collect media. I collection guess this scene. goes back to your question related to like uh, the connection between museums and NGOs. Um, you know, I'm not going to mention the political implications of this in Hungary, but um, basically um, there's been positive cases in the past that museums contributed to this discourse, like with the MAP symposium, as well as with the art pool collection becoming part of the Museum of Fine Arts, which, okay, is not time-based art mostly, but um, there are some um, there are some parallels between their situation and C3. I guess I represent the smallest organization out of all of us here. Um, C3 has a really long-standing history, and there has been cases that uh, media art conservators came and conducted a case study and restored uh, a net artwork, for example. And uh, that has been published. It's uh, available uh, publicly. It's a really good example, but uh, it's rare. And uh, whenever we get to do these projects, um, for example, looking at the archive again, or um, looking at uh, an artist's work, or just one work, it's uh, always kind of like a personal thing. And I think that's what I I really appreciate it in this um, networking events and this whole project that uh, a lot of the methodology and solutions are open source and uh, can be adopted you know, in the future by anyone because I realized that um, to do something right saves a lot of work for people in the future. Um, we have the collection, but it's not complete. Uh, there's a lot of gaps that you know, we had to start with identifying those gaps because they were, the process was not documented. Um, and yeah, that's going back to your question. It was because um, most of the work was done by volunteer students actually who recorded the data and were given very few instructions on how to do this. And I guess the scene developed a lot, you know, since that was done. And maybe now uh, people would uh, take a completely different approach. But we, ha we are in this situation now. We have that catalog. So, um, yeah, these discussions have been quite useful to just kind of make sense of this um, and come up with strategies for the future. Um, <clears throat> it was for to <laughs> people from the museum because I totally understand the problem and then you know because I've been through and uh, the one of the thing is that museum is the institution based on collection model so it has to be different so and then the kind of problem s stemming from that collecting activity kind of, you know, in a way that kind of prohibits, you know, always the thinking that we need to have this kind of, you know, conservators in the program. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't, since I kind of well aware of that and then the kind of situation in the has to solve within the system, so probably in a lot of uh, the cases, the kind of funding is the problem and then the kind of the work that you have, you know, uh, based on that, so, you know, making condition, and then you feel like you need a kind of specialties. In the connection with uh, kind of having the, like, right kind of conservator to, to do it is not right, you know, as 
they, um, Aga said it, it doesn't need a kind of special stuff. But there are kind of baby steps you can take uh, from the existing stuff, and then you're already kind of familiar with your own collection. So probably his first step is you do the condition uh, collection-wise survey. What you have, yeah, what kind of, so what is, then you can um, divide the focused area. Every small institution, since in the network, you can share the collective, so then you can uh, prioritize which one to focus. Is it gonna be uh, digitizing, analog uh, source, or, and then you also have to think about in the future what kind of the kind of new media artwork you're gonna focus. Net art can, can coming in, you know, social net, uh, yeah, network based, like you know, YouTube based, or it can be a kind of a hybrid work, analog digital. So, but, you know, uh, it's all based on kind of knowing your material first that can, you can plan. So as I told, um, kind of expressed before, collection activity and the planning for preservation has to go hand in hand. So that's the absolute kind of necessary for kind of, uh, but also doing that, because in addition to the, what he said about Puff, is that uh, the reason why I kind of advocating artists also needs to be able to document is that not, um, I'm not asking for kind of the museum uh, level kind of documentation, but because uh, the media they're dealing with, the digital in itself is why they're making is becoming rare and there's some doing the kind of very, uh, they're doing own, own software coding. So that's, you know, in itself what they're dealing is kind of uh, disappearing is really hard to document. So in a way that at that level, what they do, how they do, in, in this kind of as a kind of part of artist practice, that is good for you know individual in a way that that uh, kind of uh, interaction or kind of um, outreaching or educating uh, in relations to artists is really important. That means you have a lot of now building the net that artists you know can you know self document it in a way. Doing that, they can sustain the kind of technology, the expression of technology. Uh, kind of grassroots. So of course, but that has to be separated the kind of level of uh, conservation uh, work that as a collection institution has to go is completely, and uh, not complete, is kind of different because we have to also sustain kind of institutional uh, kind of uh, the, um, circulation. But I really recommend that it's uh, just taking baby steps, but first, just wide survey, how many VHS do you have, or how many in form of those things? So what is in stake? Maybe you don't have to be so anxious about what you have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's also um, well, our our project has been running for over a year. So um, we invited uh, uh, well, can, uh, City Gallery and the National Gallery. I think before it didn't work out, so, but you, you were part of this discussion. You only became part of these discussions within this uh, kind of platform uh, yesterday. <laughs> so it's, it's quite uh, fresh, but we had uh, the Slovak National Gallery, uh, who is one of the founding partners, and then within this year, they were able to uh, really develop a kind of a, a way to document uh, complex installations and they already used it on several works and uh, they are now feeling much more i mean it's really encouraging for like a future work with this part of their collection and uh, this looks like a success story but of course it was yeah it took a year and it took us uh, like two three well th this is our third meeting so these three meetings and uh, uh, we could really see the like very detailed, uh, you know, plans of uh, installations, like circuits and, you know, like the, uh, the technical elements that they would never uh, do before. So I'm all for baby steps and uh, I'm all for, um, uh, yeah, really continuing these, these discussions and the platform in a, like toward the future and and being open for other organizations and museums and other kind of uh, collection-oriented uh, institutions to join. 
<clears throat> yes, yeah, feels like end, but uh, Mate, no, no, you no, want no, to no. You, you wrap it up. You wrap it up. <laughs> No, but, uh, okay, uh, it takes uh, baby steps and institutional commitment. So, I mean, looking at the Slovak National Gallery, what we have to realize is that they already many years ago made this commitment towards embracing digital, towards embracing uh, technologies, and you know, they they. So that's why it only took them a year to develop a framework to take care of complex media installations because they already had this commitment. So you can make baby steps. You don't need super specialized, uh, super trained conservators, but you need the institutional commitment. That's uh, what I would appeal with on not you. I know you are super committed, but it's like together we need to sort of uh, commit ourselves as uh, public institutions towards this kind of media. I'm so sorry, I almost completely forgot about uh, our audience. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you are still here, so in case uh, you have anything on your heart or mind, uh, this is the best time to say it. Uh, I mean it. Uh, if not, uh, I will uh, turn my eyes back to us and uh, ask ourselves if we have anything else to add uh, at this point. If not, then I would ask, uh, like to, uh, do, do you want to invite us to the next uh, part of the program? So we can all warm up <laughs> just next door in the, in the uh, Palm House where uh, we have the joint exhibition between Puff and uh, Video Forum, uh, which is already open, but then the official opening tonight will also happen over there. So maybe some of you already saw it. If not, we can all go together. Uh, happy to say some words. Maybe Nela is also still around, the co-curator from Puff Festival. That would be nice. Yeah, I, you know, I, I was also so optimistic that we said, okay, we will have roundtable at 2.30, uh, and then I thought, oh, everybody will come here, but everybody was like smoking, running around, buying drinks. So what if we say, put it on us, no. what if we say that what time is it, that in 15 minutes we meet somewhere in the front or something like that, and then we just enter, like, do you want to also introduce any, when we, or we just keep it open and free? Um. Yeah, of course, I can give a short introduction. Yeah. I'm happy to do so, but I think it makes I mean, more sense over there. Yeah, yeah? yeah so shall we say 10, in... 10, 15 uh, minutes, it's, fif just, it's just the next door this way. So, yeah, in 15 minutes, so 4, 10. Yeah, but we, we need to clear the space because at 5 there's the official opening and there's some, right? Yeah, maybe, but it's better to go there now. Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. Way too long. yeah, yeah, it's official <laughs> opening. Uh, it's okay, five minutes. Let's uh, let's try. Minutes, <laughs> minutes, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's thanks. It's, it's the, there is a glass house, so you have to just like uh, walk around the corner, and there is an entrance. So. Okay, thank you all. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is it. Um, our talks in the last day and a half were recorded. Uh, they, they are on YouTube. You are welcome to study us and uh, see uh, what uh, we did <laughs> or, uh, in, a, in, a, yeah, in this colloquium. But uh, I mean, for me, it was really uh, like big learning experience and uh, I hope we will be able to continue one way or another. So yeah, thanks again. Thank you. Uh, and uh, in the name of Olomouc Museum of Art, I would like to thank to Dushan, who organized the whole beautiful program and uh, actually is taking care of uh, the whole uh, event, New Media Museums. So thank you, Dushan. Well, uh, thank you as well. Uh, I mean, <laughs> without you, I would be not able to do anything. It's true. <laughs> 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 <laughs>